Hey, lovely freaks, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Amanda. And I'm Hannah. And if you're new here, hello, welcome. If you like things strange and unusual, you can subscribe or like our channel. You can also go down to the description box and you'll see a link that will take you to all of our social media. Like Twitter, Instagram, and all that jazz. And all that jazz. Yeah. All right, guys. So we're back. Um, This episode is going to be kind of short and sweet, but we're also going to, I'm going to give you a life update as to why the fuck we have been on two weeks and off two weeks. I guess that's our new thing that we're yeah. going to do. <laughs> um, sorry we can't get like a schedule, but uh, I don't know. I mean, we don't make money doing this, so it's not like we have to pump out the the the, vo- the video, videos the and stuff. Content. Yeah. Um, and so it's kind of just a hobby that we do. But I've, I've personally just had a lot of shit going on. My husband is getting ready for a surgery. He's gone. He's gone all of January. He's still gone. And then just a bunch of other things. Um, my cat. <laughs> my cat just got over. It. Well, he's not over it yet. He has a UTI. I don't know if anybody knows. Cats can get UTIs. Yeah, they sure can. And uh, I currently have kidney stone issues going on so i thought that was kind of funny (laughs) i feel like we're having we have the same thing my love Mm -hmm. um but but no so and then hannah's just been dealing with college and stuff like that and school school um so yeah that's pretty much it that's that's why we have been uh mia but you know you'll get an episode when you get an episode i don't know what to tell you um hopefully I don't know. I would say hopefully we can do another one next week, but I'm not going to keep my fingers crossed on that one. <laughs> I'm not going to hold my breath. Um, but no, I want I wanted to do something different today because we've, doing, we've been doing a lot of murder stuff and I wanted to get back to like some spooky things or um, doing aliens is really hard though. Like, yeah, it's cause hard to do. Ju- yeah, there's and... really not. And if they are, they're just, like... Very short. Yeah, we saw these things in the sky. Which, by the way... I don't know if you guys have been on TikTok. <laughs> like, you haven't. Um, but there have been tons of new sightings of stuff recently. Like, in the past yeah. two weeks. Have you seen all the videos? Yeah, I've been seeing videos. Did you see the video of the thing in Turkey that was, like, red? And it mm-hmm. looked like a swirl? Mm-hmm. And they said it was... I don't know. The meteorologists were calling it something, but I was just like, <laughs> that's <Sure>. weird. <laughs> and then I saw one video where a girl had, um, she was recording it and what, what? No, no, no. It wasn't a girl. It was on the news. They were showing the night sky. You know how like in the nightly news, yeah. like our local news, yeah. they'll show like the night sky, the city skyline or whatever. And they'll be like, this is the temperature outside and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, they were doing that and there were these flashes of lights and they looked like it looked like to me it looked like um like you know the deep ocean where there's like those fish that oh I know glow and they kind of like make a, a swish they look yeah. like a swish well that's what this looked like hmm. yeah it was pretty cool and the woman the news anchor was like what is that and the guy was like i don't know and then they, they was just back and forth like what is that and um it was constant, just over and over again. Hmm. So a lot of weird shit has been happening, and the night they're coming to take us. Finally, they yeah. <gasps> or there's just so many theories out there as to why there's so much going on. Um, a lot of people think, and we've talked about this before, that they, that aliens were already here. So you know mm. they're getting ready to leave because the world's coming to an end. Which I mean, <laughs> are they like ready to take over the world? Yeah. <laughs> like a big giant or something, a giant alien. Maybe they'll do a better job than the current administration. <laughs> okay. Uh, so like free health care for everyone. We're like, oh, oh, okay. Your eggs will only be 50 cents. <laughs> nice. Bread, a uh, couple of cents. Oh, okay. I, I don't, I'm not, I, I, don't, I like this. No. <laughs> Um, but anyways, so yeah, I just thought that was really interesting about that whole thing. And then there's a whole nother, like, and I can't even remember what it's called right now. But have 
you seen the conspiracy theories on TikTok about these beings? I think they were called the... Some starts with an N. But they were... Mm-mm. Essentially, they were alien... They're an alien race that helped build the pyramids and everything. Mm-hmm. And people say that they're coming back for us. So mm. that's one of the conspiracy theories. And I'm just like... I've never heard that before in my life. But they have to do with like the Illuminati and all this other bullshit. and mm. So I don't know. But maybe we'll do a podcast on that because... It's pretty interesting. There's there's people like that worship these these beings, I guess you could say. There's like a yeah. religion based around it. And I wish mm-hmm. I could remember what it's called, but I can't right now. Um, so anyways, let's get started on today's episode. We're going to be talking about the Ocean Born Mary house. So this is a haunted house. Um, well, it's... It's supposedly haunted. However, there's also like an urban legend mixed to it. So we're going to talk about the urban legend and then, you know, talk about the ghost activity. There's not a lot of reported ghost activity except for the person that owns the house. But um, I just think the legend behind it is pretty cool. So Ocean Ocean Born Mary is the name of the woman that we're going to talk about today. That's her nickname. Um, her real name is Mary Wallace. Wallace? I'm sorry. Uh, but everybody called her Ocean Born. And the reason why is because she was a, um, like a really nice lady who was born to a Scot-Irish immigrant in July of 1720. And her mother immigrated, um, like, oh, she came over on the ships and mm-hmm. she went into labor with her on the ocean. So that's why they call her Ocean Born Mary. Yeah. So, um, she actually went into labor with her in the middle of the night. And, um, or like, I don't know if it was the middle of the night, but this is the legend behind it. She went into labor with her and then either that night, there's some, some things that say that it was like, as she was being born, there was a uh, pirate ship that attacked the ship that they were on. Wow. And then some reports say it was like the next story. the next <laughs> night. Yeah. So whatever legend you want to believe in. But um, the pirates had attacked the ship and they were, you know, killing the crew and they were taking people hostage and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden the captain of the ship, the pirate captain ship, he... Um, the legend says that he heard the baby crying and he went over to her and her beauty was so awe that he decided to not take over that ship, take over that ship and kill anybody. And he told Mary's mother that you should name her Mary. And he gave her, um, I think it was a green, green silk. Yeah. Green silk, like Chinese silk, I guess that he had gotten from his Stolen. pirate raiding raid, yeah. raids. And, um, he gave it to her and he said that she needs to wear it when she gets married. Hmm. So that's pretty cool. Um, you know, if that's the true legend, it's but a story. yeah, <laughs> um, her mom, she was, the other legend says that her mom woke up, she went upstairs from the ship and she was pregnant at the time. She went upstairs from the ship and she saw people running about and everything. And she was like, oh my God, what's going on? And they were like, we're being attacked by pirates. So she thought she had been stabbed, but actually she had started having contractions and her mm-hmm. water broke like right mm-hmm. in that moment. And so she went to hide somewhere and um, she went to hide and then she gave birth, like trying to be quiet in like a closet. And wow. then he heard the baby crying. So whichever story you believe, uh, the one's pretty. That could be a movie. Neat. It really could be a movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so some people think that the um, pirate captain. We don't know his name, so there's speculation of who he might have been because there were several different pirates in that area at the time. But some people say that maybe his wife or his daughter was named Mary. And so that's why he chose that name because they had died. Um, So, you know, so maybe that's why he was in awe of her. Because I think if that was the case, it probably was like a daughter that he had that was named Mary. But after making it 
to the Americas, Mary grew up in Londonderry, New Hampshire, and did eventually get married, and she actually got married in the green silk dress, which was from the, the silk that, you know, her mother had gotten from the pirate, right. hmm. according to the legend. <laughs> I have to keep saying that because it's not verified that that's true, but... So, Mary had five children, and the ocean-born Mary house is said to be the final resting place of where she um, finally passed away. She was a beautiful lady with red hair and blue eyes, which is really... And she really had red hair and blue eyes, which is really unusual. (laughs) Yeah, really, really unusual. So... She was, like, a super beautiful woman. And her story, like, her life story is not very, it's kind of typical. She married. She had five kids. Um, the house, the Oceanborn Mary house, was actually her son, one of her son, eldest son's house. And um, she actually went to live with him. And some people, it's kind of confusing because some of the legends say that she didn't actually live there. She just visited there a lot. And some of the legends say that she did live there. So whichever, I mean, she was there. That's basically all I need to know. Mm-hmm. Um, the house is said to be haunted by the redheaded ghost after the son passed away though. Um, which he passed away. There's another legend about him dying. He actually fell off of a horse and a Apparently, a horse, one of the horses he was riding got, like, reared up and knocked him off. And Mm. then he died. And some people made a legend out of that, saying that the horse saw the ghost of his mom. And so, maybe that's why he got spooked. spooked, (laughs) And, um, so the house was bought by a man named Mr. Lewis Ray. He was in love with the stories of the house. And over time, he made fantastic tales of haunting and legend. He made a legend about her saying after her husband died that the pirate that spared her when she was a baby actually yeah. came back to be with her. And he also told of tales that the pirate there was pirate treasure buried all over the property. So after this, people from all over the world, well, not all over the world, but pe- people from all over the area would come and he would sell like shovels. So they could like dig on the property and try to look for treasure, <laughs> and uh, nobody ever found anything. Probably not. Um, he also had tons of mediums come and like ghost hunters and things like that. And there were some people that said they saw some stuff. Um, some people said that they could see a redheaded woman in a gown, like a rocking in a rocking chair up in the mm-hmm. window. And then some would say they would see her on the property. Lorraine Warren actually came to the property and she didn't say specifically what she felt but she said she did feel a presence of sorts on the property um but she never said what it was or she never specified that it was a redhead woman or whatever um there's also different mediums that have come that came forward during that time and said they didn't feel crap (laughs) they're like no this is he's lying you know blah 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 but i mean whether you believe it or not i don't really know um I guess it would just kind of depend. Was there a lot of sightings or just... There wasn't a lot. Mm -hmm. So, in the 1960s, Roy sold the house to a couple who bought it. And um, they decided to call up, like, these really important uh, paranormal investigators. And they were like, okay, we're going to see if there's a lot of spiritual activity. They didn't find any... Sorry. It's fine. (laughs) What was that? I don't know. It came out of the chair. They didn't find any spiritual activity of Mary, per se. But they did have, like, orbs and things like that. And they did see different um, paranormal activity, like, out on the property and stuff. Mm -hmm. But that's... Nobody could say whether or not it was specifically her or if it's just because it was old property. You know what I mean? That, That could be it. So, after the paranormal investigators came out um the they kind of stopped having tours of the house the the um the roy family they stopped having tours of the house and they kind of shut it off to the public today it's shut off to the public and you can't go on the property like at all Mm -hmm. there are still people that like go on the property and try to sneak on there and dig and stuff like that and i guess maybe they closed it down some people say they closed it down because they 
um, didn't want anybody to get hurt by the spirits that were there. But, or there's another thing that people say that they closed it down because they uh, didn't want to share the treasure. Mm. Which, I don't believe that theory at all. Probably they closed down because they couldn't afford to... Well, they said that the people that own it now, it, there's like a sign up somewhere before you get to the house. And it says that there are no poltergeist spirits, um, all these other things they name off living in this on this property. Hmm. So, I guess they, they just really didn't want um, people to come on there. But people still do. They still trespass and try to get on the property. And people say that they see ghosts all the time on the property. Whether you believe it or not, that is up to you. But um, that is the story of the ghost of the Ocean Born Mary House. So see, very short and sweet. <laughs> um, but now we're going to talk about a different ghost story. This is the ghost of Deer Island and Firewater it's a, and Firewater Ghost of Biloxi, Mississippi. So we live in Ooh, Mississippi. I didn't know this. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I've heard about the Deer Island. Um, story before but yeah so they're like two of the oldest ghost stories in mississippi i guess you could say but another one that i've heard about my whole life is the swinging bridge in byram i've never heard of that oh you never heard of that one so apparently there's like ghosts that live on the swinging bridge and if you go late at night you can hear like stuff i've never been Mm -hmm. well i take that back i think we went i feel like i want to say i went in high school one night and we, like, heard something, but there's, like, a river underneath it. So, I'm pretty sure it was probably just something splashing, like a beaver or something. Probably. But we, like, got the hell out of there. Because um, anything can sound spooky in the middle of the night. But, yeah. you know, whatever. Alright, so, both of these documents were first documented in an article published by the A.G. Ragson in 19... 19- 22. The story of the ghost of the Deer Island was then nearly 200 years old. He quoted Captain, gosh, these names, Tablier, Sir, I don't know. Tablier. Um, who was a resident in Biloxi for all of his 28, 28, 78 years of life um, as the authority of this tale like he was the guy that told this tale of two fishermen who were spending the night on the island when all of a sudden they heard a great shaking and rattling in the palmetto i can never say that word Palmetto. i mean i can but like when i look at it i want to say palm something Mm -hmm. but anyways palmetto bush assuming the noise to be made by a wild hog the men intentionally initially paid little attention to it and they were like okay it's nothing you know and then the sound grew louder suddenly they investigated the cause and they were stunned to find a headless skeleton standing erect so straight up amongst the palmettos so palmettos are like short little shrubber like little shrubbery bushes that are out in the island the two men ran to their boats and with the headless ghost in pursuit of them but um They were able to escape his headless ghostness. (laughs) The story was... The the story of the headless ghost originated from an old pirate story. According to the legend, the pirate captain once steered his ship into Biloxi Bay to bury a large... uh, Like a large amount of treasure. He and his men buried their gold on Deer Island, chopping off the heads of anyone... I mean, chopping off the heads of one of their own men to leave his body behind so that way he could, like, kind of guard the, um, the gold and everything. And, hmm, I think I've, like, heard this story before. It's familiar. Probably in one of those books that you have, Mm. the haunted books that you've got. (laughs) The apparition of the headless ghost was verified by Ragusan. By by another Biloxi fisherman who said that he had seen it while he was exploring with two other men. Their experience was s- similar to the one of the, the captain that we talked about first saying that they had heard something. Mm-hmm. Um, a great rattling in the palmetto bush and then it proceeded to like run at them or whatever. Um, 
and they got away as fast as possible and they went to the mainland. I would love to go to Deer Island. I think that would be really cool. Not at night, just during the day. Oh, dear. <laughs> the ghost of Deer Island is said to be responsible for mysterious lights and strange sounds observed on the island to this day. The other old Biloxi uh, tale that we're going to talk about is the Firewater Ghost. A supernatural blue light, which I've heard of this before. And if you remember, um, we talked about uh, the Pascagoula UFO sighting. Mm -hmm. Remember the yeah, light, the, the light. blue lights in the water that they saw? Yeah. So, um, it's a supernatural blue light that moves over the waters of the Biloxi Bay long before the invention of electrical light. According to the legend, the mysterious light often moves across the bay between Biloxi and Ocean Springs. The same captain, Tibbler, or whatever the hell his name is, who told the story about Deer Island, said that he and his brother Lewis saw the firewater ghost uh, around 1892. They were rowing their boat by Black by a back bay around two in the morning and then they noticed they suddenly like noticed an appearing light that was swishing through the water he said that it was described as blue in color and it traveled one foot above the water he and his brother stopped rowing and watched as it crossed the bay and disappeared into ocean springs according to legends um local legends holds that the fire water is a spectacular like Go? sensory thing and oh, sensory. like yeah and uh who patrols the waters at night so it's like a ghost that hmm. patrols the water i guess you can say he's a police ghost yeah <laughs> the stories of the deer island and the firewater ghost are most um but the most important parts of the folk history of the mississippi gulf coast so the next time you're walking to Biloxi beaches at night, just remember that you can enjoy the sounds and all that. And then you can also maybe see some firewater ghosts and see some lights from Deer Island. So that'd be pretty cool. So yeah, that are the two stories that we have for you today. Really short and sweet. We've mm -hmm. made it to 22 minutes. That's good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really want to go to Biloxi. Like I've been to Biloxi a hundred million times, but I've never really... I've heard of the um, Deer Island, but I've never really thought about going there. But that'd be pretty cool. I wonder if they have... I didn't look that up. I didn't look it up to see if they had um, tours that go to Deer Island. Probably, if I guess. They'll make money anywhere. You know how... That's yeah. That's Biloxi for you. Let me see. Because that's where they have all those beaches and stuff. Now, I know you can go out to, like... No. They don't? Hmm. Well, it says Deer Bay Biloxi Boat Tours are closed. Permanently closed. Permanently closed. That's interesting. Or temporarily suspicious. closed. Suspicious. Mmm. Suspicious. <laughs> What's for? Murder? <laughs> it's the, it's the skeleton, headless skeleton ghost for me. It's the blue policeman water ghost for me. <laughs> <laughs> policeman water ghost. I'm trying to look. Jesus, phone. Quit being stupid. Yes, so see, there's. That's where Deer Island is, hmm. which we've been to Ocean Springs a hundred million times and Biloxi. That's a pretty big island. Mm-hmm. It's big. Yeah, you would think it would be like this little bitty one, but yeah. it's not. So yeah, Does apparently. Does anybody live could, there? No, it's no? just. Hmm. It's just an island. Well, it actually used to be a lot bigger than that. Um. And you can't get, I mean, obviously you can't get to it except for by boat. See, somebody was, look at that. Tenting there. Damn. Somebody was tenting there. If you go on Google and you and you click on it, it'll show you like a picture of, I bet that was the Google guy. It was at his, at his tent there. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. I forgot to take my tent out of the picture. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, apparently it was bigger than this. But when Hurricane Camille came, it kind of took out like half of the island. Um, and it's just washed away slowly over time. But then there's these islands out here. There's Cat Island. Have you have Cat you ever Island? heard that? Yeah. So Cat Island apparently it used to be connected to Gulfport somehow mm -hmm. or Past Christian or something like that. But um, there's actual like 
There are cats, cats? that live on the island, like wow. stray cats that live on the island. That's cute. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there are any more. I just remember that being a thing. Um, Let's but go to you know. Cat Island. And then, of course, you have Dolphin Island, which is over by. It's over by um. Biloxi. No, it's over by. Uh, what's that alabama alabama so that's that's like closer to alabama but um i've been to dolphin island before but yeah so that's why for anyone that ever comes to biloxi or the gulf of mexico and mississippi our water is really gross um and it's because of all these islands horn island and then you have these two islands so they keep the water nasty because there's like a whole thing that the water has to go over before it gets to us so it's not just clear you know (laughs) especially after like a hurricane or something like that it's really bad you don't want to visit during a hurricane or after one um but anywho all right well guys i hope that you enjoyed today's episode um i'm gonna go lay down because my back hurts and uh hopefully we'll see you guys next week if we don't you know We'll see you when we see you. Okay. (laughs) All right. Later, guys. Bye. Bye.